going on? How are you doing, man? We haven't talked for ages. No, yeah, I've been doing good, man. What have you been up to? I see you've got a good collection of books back there. Yeah, you know, so I like having these behind me in the classroom because then kids always, like, they know to look for them now. So they always ask me, Mr. Man, what's that one with the red, with the red letters? What's that yellow book there? You know, like... Yeah. And, and it's cool because, I mean, you know, I bought the Lefty Guitarist Survival Handbook from your collection because I have some left-handed uh, guitarists. And I was like, I've never, I hadn't, myself, I had never seen a left-handed guitarist survival uh, guidebook before. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, yeah. Get this for the school. And, and the school agreed, of course, which was nice. And then the classic there, Thank the Guitar you. Simplified. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people have been digging that lately and I'm so happy that it's like helping people out. You know, it's been, it was been a while since I wrote the book and uh, seems to be having a resurgence, which is awesome. And um, thank you for buying them. And I, I just was wondering, like, did you uh, on the lefties uh, book, did it help? You know, are they finding it useful? Uh, as they Yeah. I mean, I think the thing with this one is, well, I mean, with everything that you do, it's got the the images and stuff in here. And so I normally just show the kids anyway. Like, that's how I've been teaching all guitarists, including left-handed, for years and years. But what I'm finding is, like, if I have a class of 20 kids or, or more, potentially, when they get to that point where they're trying to do some of these things, like the bar chord, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm like... Okay, I've shown you the the shape, but then they want to check. So if 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 F is on the first fret, then is the second one G, the second fret? And I'm like, guys, come on, let's think about this for a second. Yeah. But instead, I can go, okay, here, this is the page you're looking for. These are the chords you're looking for. Like, go through it, and I'll come back in a few minutes when I've circled around everybody else. I go to the the drummer, and then the strings, and the pianos, and I go to everybody in a circle. By the time yeah. I get back around to the guitar group, if they didn't have this beside them, they, they'd just be sitting there waiting for me to get back, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the so the answer that was a really long que- uh, answer to your simple question. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the answer is yes, because it has again the pictures, you know. Oh yeah. That's so- how I I, I think in pictures, you know, I have to kind of take whatever people express to me in words and kind of do mental gymnastics and be like, all right, how does that look in my head? You know, and even I feel like even when soloing or playing, I'm thinking of big blocks of shapes and colors and stuff that are just flying by. Probably this way, I guess. Mm-hmm. In my head, but <laughs> yeah, well, that's great to hear. Yeah, it's been good. The uh yeah, I mean, actually, you've written a bunch of things now because okay. I was looking through like the books, and I, I have, including the the melodic uh, pentaton- pentatonics, which I guess was like an accompaniment to a workshop. Yeah. I think this little guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one. Yeah, cool. You know, I so I just put this together. It's uh, I saw a TikTok video that showed you how to. To, to fold up this thing you know it was like oh i make these books and out of one piece of paper so that's that that was the whole beginning of it and i was like oh cool and the guy was showing you know you, you fold it and then you cut it and you can make a little book and he'd put stickers in it and draw on it and he's like i make these for my friends and all this and i'm going like huh i hmm. think that's super awesome <laughs> so i was like i wonder if with six pages if i could get the entire sort of distill the pentatonic way method of like improvising over changes using just the pentatonic scale, but like in a more, you know, refined way than just playing one scale over everything. That's the whole idea. You play a different scale over each chord. And like, I was like, can I take that whole idea, starting with like, if they don't even know the pentatonic scale, like show them all the shapes of the scales and show them, you know, how you can use it as major and minor and then get into like, all right, here's like six chord voicings you can use to cover the neck. So three major, three minor. Right. That's all I really use, like to, to make sense of any chord progression on the neck in real time. And that's the whole thing is trying to have these simple ideas, simple tools, so you can 
improvise and play in real time. Like you go sit down with somebody like, all right, here's a chord progression. And, you know, rather than just playing open chords and trying to figure it out, you, you have these tools that you can kind of jump right in right away and play at like a, you know, and sound like a professional, whatever that means, you know, like, so, you, you know, and then, you know, here's some examples of how to use those for chord progression. Right. And then it shows the five shapes and which of those three chords go with each shape. So if you can memorize that, this page right here is, is what it's all about. Then you have cool. everything you need, you know, all the tools. Then it's just repetition and, and kind of getting it ingrained in your guitar DNA where you're like, okay, this is just how I play. And then here's those same chord progressions from the last page showing which scales go with one, each one. So I think I did a good job. It's, it's still in the guinea pig stage of like people are checking it out mm -hmm. and saying this would be so much easier to understand if you did this and that, which I love feedback. So, um, yeah. And then, yeah, I put together, this was the main idea. And then I said, well, you know, for the first 25 people that buy it, I'll put on a webinar in, uh, in November. Yeah. Like, so anybody that bought it before then can come and hang out, ask questions. I'll go through the book, you know, take a, take some time and go through it, answer questions. And then that will be recorded. And then that will go, you know, be like a recorded webinar, you know, and every once in a while I'll update it and say, Hey, I'm going to do another webinar and reach out to anybody who bought the book, see if they're interested. But yeah, yeah. Pretty cool, man. I think it's a, a surprise book that I put together. I wasn't planning on putting this together. You know, yeah, that's what I love. Actually, I'll show the video here. Uh, when you explain what you just said, like you just saw the guy on Twitter and you're like, Hmm, six pages. Hmm, I wonder. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I made something for you. So I saw on TikTok the other day, you could take a normal piece of paper like this and you fold it up and you cut it, and you flip it, and do all the things and you can make a little book out of it. I said, wouldn't it be cool if I could take everything about the pentatonic way system and simplify it and fit it into a six page book like this? And I did it. So everything in here is geared to make it so you can take your pentatonic playing to the next level. Not like everybody else, we just use the same scale over everything. This will show you how to switch pentatonic scales for each chord. You have the chord shapes here, and you have all the shapes of the pentatonic and what chord goes with each shape and different examples of what that would look like on the neck. So get yours today, and it's gonna change the way you play forever. Um, <laughs> I, right. I, I love that because, you know, actually one of the things, um, Preparing for our, for this chat here, I went back and watched the two previous episodes where you and I chatted. Okay. Um, the first time was actually really early on in. It was before I was numbering episodes. Like, that's oh, wow. how early it was, I guess. Because when I first started, I was like, I don't know, I'm just like doing chats, you know. And it was Leon. Leon was still <laughs> joining in on these um, at yeah, that time. Yeah. I do hope he'll he'll come back and join in on a couple episodes at some point. Oh, that'd be great. So I actually don't even know. I have to go back and see which episode it was. This is season three currently, and I think we're on like episode, like we're we're coming up to the 70s now. We're coming up to the end of the 60s, you know? Yeah. So we were chatting just sort of about guitar in general. And then, of course, we were talking about the pentatonic way as part of that, because, you know, that's, you know, how you've been seeing it for a while, you know? Like, yeah, I can't stop. <laughs> yeah. Well, I couldn't change it if I tried at this point. It's how I how I understand the guitar, right? Like every other thing is related to that. Like I go, oh, it's like this pentatonic way, but you add this note or you, you know, change this. But sorry. Exactly. Yeah, we did. We did talk about some of that in that episode, actually. And then later on, I thought, well, you know, maybe we should actually have the, the chat specifically about what that means. Like what is the pentatonic way exactly how like what are you talking about basically so we talked more specifically about it and i thought it was really cool because uh recently i joined this celtic band oh um, cool yeah it's awesome because they if you remember the first time i ever turned in a recording uh for the pw improv jam which for those who don't know, that's on uh, X, which previously was Twitter and 
hashtag PW Improv Jam. I sent in a recording, but I only had an acoustic guitar here. I just, I do like playing acoustic sometimes. And so with this Celtic band, because my whole life I've been playing over blues and rock and stuff like that. And even when I go into jazz, I still sort of think like with the one, four, five chord progression, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I think it's fair to say probably every music does that chord progression. But suddenly I'm trying to play in the majors, major scales and stuff like that. And I was like, like the first time I tried to solo, I was just like, ah. ah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, it's like super fast. You know, the fiddler's going, you know, every time we go through it, she goes a little faster. And I'm like, ah. So she goes, solo. <laughs> Bang, bling, plonk. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I started to think of it like, what would Neil do? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just that it's it's like applying what I know to like this new this new thing, and then you have to just tweak it slightly, you know, like yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, yeah, I feel like the the combination of chords and notes are the same, so I would probably approach it that same way. And then it's just yeah, like for each style of music. It's more the, the the rhythmic sort of, in that case, traditions of it, you know, like, you know, with Celtic music, there's probably these rhythm, you know, rhythmic sort of things you do, some added notes you would add to the scale. Like bluegrass is the same way. It's a lot of one, four, fives, and you just, uh, you would just play the same scales, but in different rhythm. You know, yes. metal would be different. You'd be a lot of like bends and like long notes and and yeah that's what i'm finding too so what would neil do that that's funny <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was, it was kind of like that because I was like, hey, I, I, I just, like, it's not a problem with my hand being able to move fast enough. It was, it was things like that. Like, I'd lose the rhythm because normally I would bend here. Like, this is a moment yeah. in, a, in a normal solo that I do. I would bend because I, it would give me a second to think for what the next thing would be, the next jumping off point, you know? Yeah. And so that was part of it. And part of it was that I was really trying to jump in, like the beginning of the solo, jumping in super fast. So I was doing like right. 60 notes, where I could have just come in like quarter notes, dun, 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 build up where I am, and then how do I apply what I know to this different territory? I have played Celtic stuff, sort of just the chords, and I love that. It's like just chord, 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 chord on every on every beat, and that's the challenge. But then when she said solo, I was like, I really hadn't even thought of that. It hadn't entered my brain because it's all about the fiddle, and we have a harp player, which is awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Like, like a harp, like a, a harp, like harp. Thing. Yeah. Like, I mean, she's fantastic. She's she's really talented on the harp like there's there's at least one song where it's the two of us starting and then we have a, a tin flute that starts a tin whistle i guess okay. yeah and that's cool yeah it's I mean, it's all like instruments that i'm not used to really playing with and yeah. in a form that i'm not used to so i'm really so enjoying I, I haven't listened to celtic music in a long time but i don't know if you remember back in the day right before spotify and streaming music you had cds mm -hmm. so <laughs> And, and I don't know about you, but I'd end up with like one CD in my car and yeah. then it would just stay in there the whole time. I wasn't like switching out CDs and stuff. I had a Chieftains live somewhere CD and I just had that in there. I remember listening to that for a couple seasons, must have been like six or, you know, nine months. It was just in there. So, <laughs> you know, because you just drive around once it was a Rage Against the Machine CD and then Beastie Boys and then Chieftains and whatever, whatever I kind of bought that recently yeah but tell me I'm about it I, I sorry go ahead oh no i was just gonna say about when i think of pen uh celtic music rather than bends like with the blues it would be like 
I think of more like like that type of stuff like that keeps going back like that sort of yeah. stuff where it's just no bends but it's like going back and forth on himself yeah. but see even just now when you were imitating that a little bit you did do like a little sort of tremolo thing i guess that's like you don't do that i mean i can't stop on my on the acoustic I, I can't really get that right. and i don't have time to do it like it's and it exactly. starts again. It's like it's not. There's no time to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I suppose in the moment under pressure, I would have to drop that. That would be the first thing to go, and you just kind of keep going. That's yep. really cool and some good music. got a bunch of notes here and one of the things that i noticed neil this is the third time i already said the third time we're talking on our mind on music but we've also been texting each other and communicating through uh it I, I when i spoke with mickey maffey the last time yeah who i met because of the pentatonic way and the improv jam i said you know sometimes i say x to people for what used to be twitter <laughs> And they say, no, it's still Twitter. It's just a silly thing, X, you know. And then some people, I say Twitter, and they say, no, it's X. So he said, no, no, people are calling it Twix. Twix, yeah, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, that makes total sense, yeah. Um, yeah, but so we talked a bunch of times, but actually I was looking, preparing for this chat, and I was like, man you've been busy like so oh, yeah. like you have so many things so first of all just for those people who haven't gone back yet and watched our previous chats or you know you've got these books which i sort of alluded to but i didn't actually say the pentatonic way unlocking the fretboard with the pentatonic scale so i haven't actually written a pentatonic way book yet that's that's coming um I'm going to put everything into it. It's going to be like all about the pentatonic scale and stuff like that, but I haven't written it yet. So it's right. It's in here still. The books I do have are like the ones behind you, <laughs> the guitar simplified, the lefty guitarist survival handbook. Yeah. And then um, there's the mini book. We, we talked about that. And mm -hmm. also then there's the, the free cheat sheet scale cheat sheets, which is basically the back section of, the guitar simplified all those chord the scale shapes and okay. diagrams there um yeah because you know i'm not i'm not here just to say you can only play at the pentatonic scale i'm like here's every scale 99.9 percent .9 of all scales you'll ever need like if it's not in there there's also like a recipe like page on there to like how you can build these scales so to say you know teaches you how like you know this is the first and the flat two and the two and the flat three and the three and all the intervals of the scale. And then it gives you a whole bunch of scale recipes. Like everyone I could find, I scoured the internet, scoured all the books I have. So the Hungarian neutral seven scale or whatever, it's all in there. <laughs> so I was like, you know, cause guitars, we want to collect them all, you know, we want to be like, I need to know all the scales or else I'm going to be, you know, a worthless guitar player. But you don't. So like, uh, you don't, I said, you know, once you realize, here's all the scales, once you realize it's way too much, you know, come back and check out just the pentatonic scales. Cause you know. You just made me think, I wonder if like, I, I'm sure I have thought that as well. Like I need all the scales. I need to know all, every single I know, thing I, there I is do. to know. Yeah. Um, 
but I, maybe because I have taught um, elementary, middle school, and high school kids for so long, it's like I I've had to uh, pare it down. I've had to like distill it into usable things, and I get you know those kids go up there. And they play stuff that sounds amazing. And to be fair, I have 20, 25 kids in a, on a regular day. And then, you know, these musical music festivals we go to, like, it's 100 kids, you know, uh, on stage, yeah. which is like, oh, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> I'm doing a wind band festival. I leave Thursday for the weekend. Friday and Saturday, we spend the whole day rehearsing with the different sections, the trumpets and the saxophones and, you know, all this stuff. And then yeah. on Sunday afternoon, these are kids from, I think, four different schools or five different schools that haven't met each other yet. Oh, wow. On Saturday, they do a concert together. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. That's so cool. cool I, I, like, to get 100 kids on the stage doing a concert after they just met each other the day before, it's an yeah. awesome way to spend a weekend, you know? What an opportunity. And so, yeah. Jeremy, did you, did you meet all the kids from all four schools or are you meeting them too for the first time and like saying, all right, let's get this together. Everybody. I don't even know the teachers at the schools. Oh, like, wow. <laughs> so we'll all go meet up. We'll meet on um, Thursday evening. We'll have dinner together. We'll like, okay, which section are you doing? You're doing the trumpets. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm doing the, okay. I don't know, bassoons. Okay. Well, cool. So <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> That's cool. He just yeah, divide and conquer. Yeah, That's and of awesome. course, we, we get, get a guest conductor who who is like a specialist in wind band. So if I'm helping out with, with let's say, the brass, for example, it's not my thing, really. I'm a strings guy. So, yeah, um, but I can help out, you know. Yeah, yeah. But when they get on stage, there's a conductor who, you know, he has the baton. That's amazing. That's so cool. <laughs> How did I get here? We were supposed to be talking about guitars uh, who knows it's cool <laughs> <laughs> i want to ask you about one of the things that you sent through so you have the the courses right you have how to solo over everything yeah. course which is 124 lessons hey how's it going it's neil from the pentatonic way and in this video i want to take you on a quick look behind the scenes at how to solo over everything i think it will change a lot of people's lives. I know that's a bold claim to make, uh, but it did change my life. If you're obsessed about guitar and you're, you're really looking for a way to be able to improvise and understand the neck like you, like you feel like everybody else can do but you can't do, this will change your life. This is what you've been looking for and it, it changed my life in that way and it's made guitar playing so much more enjoyable for me. Um, and this is how I felt. Like the fretboard, which was once a maze, right? of all these ways and labyrinth and you're like, how do I get out of this thing? Instead, it's, it's now a playground where I can just be free and play and jump all over the place and doing neck parkour. It just frees you up. Like I said, 95% of all the things you ever want to play, this system is going to allow you to do that. I think it's, it's really cool what you're doing there. And some people, you know, I've seen the feedback, love it. I, Jesse's the first guy that comes to mind. On, uh, oh, yeah. on Twix. Oh, Jesse's great. On Twix, yeah. yeah. I just love the fact I've seen so much growth in his playing in the time that I've been back on X, like, you know, um, yeah. since I started this podcast and looking at your stuff and, and he's like, he's so consistent. He just keeps at it and he's really showing growth because of it, you know? Yeah. I'm glad you say that. Cause I hear the same thing every time I hear him play, you know, like, um, yeah, he went through the second group of the course and um it was great to have in there and then everybody goes through the course 
at the end, after the first group I did, they were like, well, what do we do now? Like, we want more stuff. So I started a thing that's like, um, they call it Global Guitar Network. So yep. every Monday night, we meet up for like an hour or so. And uh, it's almost like doing what we do in on Twix, right? Where we do the, the backing track and then everybody show like jams on it. Um, records themselves and uploads it. We have it on Discord for this one, but because um, then you know it's kind of private. Mm-hmm. And then we do the same thing. So we meet up on Monday though, and we talk about it rather than Twix, where it's just like, yeah, just do it. You know, that was awesome. We kind of can say, oh, that was super cool. You know, fist mm-hmm. bump, fire guitar. Yeah, <laughs> I know, like I like this just... part when you did this thing. You know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Give a little bit of stuff, but on on Mondays we you know, everybody goes in the hot seat. And we just talk about like, man, this was great. You know, do you ever think of this? And it's not just me with the feedback. You know, I try to give feedback and like tips like, oh, if you if you want to take it to the next level, you might think of this or I like how you did this there. Can you know, hear how like that worked? And then uh, but other people, other players, too. And Jesse's great at saying, oh, that sounded great, man. You know, like I like, uh, you know, maybe try this or whatever. Everybody's super supportive, just like on, on the PW jams. Um, so, yeah, it, I've just been happy to just hang out with Jesse every Monday night. You know, he's such a good dude, good energy. Yeah. And everybody in there, too. So, um, yeah, hopefully, you know, we'll get some more people in there after the next one. The next group of, um, you know, students for the for the course is starting on January 1st. So there's a bunch of time. But I've already had some people sign up and they're, they're already paying, doing the payment plans, getting it paid off before they even start, which is great. Wow. Um, and then once they go through that, then if they want, they can join the group on Monday nights and have, you know, continue the journey. Because it's, you know, like I was saying, it's once you understand it, it's easy to understand, but it's putting into practice, kind of like like jumping into the Celtic thing where it's like, Okay, mm-hmm. like it seems really fast. It seems like a lot, but after you do it for a while, you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. It just that'll just become natural to you. So it's it's the similar way with this. Like it's easy to understand, but you need to kind of just keep doing it and keep practicing it. The it's not even like practicing. It's just like jamming over chords using this method, which is super fun. It's not yeah. like you're sitting there. Going, oh, I got to practice this. You know, like you're 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 creating spontaneously over these tracks and some t- some weeks you have more time some weeks you don't you know so you, you do one take and you're like all right this is all i had time for you know but yeah. it doesn't matter you get something out of it there's always some kernel of at least of something that we can be like that was awesome you know do more of that you know why did that work because of this and you know and yeah, I, do, do- I think that was one of the things um, like I haven't, I haven't turned in a, a gem for ages and ages. And one of the things is I find it really hard to just go, um, you know, warts and all, and just put it in anyway. Like I, I really struggle with that. So I would go and like any, the, the few that I actually put in, it would have been like <laughs> 20 takes and I would go, okay, that's the closest I'm going to get, you know? Yeah. You know you probably got a lot out of that you know what i mean like that process it's but finding the time to like be able to sit and do 20 takes is a that's is, the thing that's the know, balance is because yeah i got tons out of that like i learned a lot and back then i was i was playing in a rock band um like classic rock type stuff so yeah. i would go to practice after doing that for the you know that that one day and i would of course apply what i had spent all that time practicing in a you know, in a Zeppelin song or in a whatever we were playing, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's sometimes just that, like, it's it makes you more nimble. And people say it's muscle memory and stuff. But actually, I think of it like it's all just building up your toolkit. So it's yeah. like, 
okay, this is the job that I need to do. I, I need this type of screwdriver. Do I need a Phillips or, or you know, yeah. this or that or, you know. Exactly. And I've got all the types of different heads and sizes because I've been practicing all week. Whereas yeah. when I did the Celtic thing, I hadn't tried to play a solo of any kind for months and months. So when I was just trying to go, you know, 16th notes over chord progressions and timing that I wasn't used to, it was like flink, flonk, blank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. You take over. You go ahead. I'll be fine. Go on without me. <laughs> the, guy, the guy with the penny whistle is like Charlie Parker. Like, <laughs> like, you know, like well, the funny thing you. was like, even the, even the fiddle player who she's like, an amazing player and stuff like that. And she's like the band leader. So she's calling out the changes and she's speeding up or not speeding up. And, you know, um, yeah. but when it came for her moment to like, just improvise something rather than playing the notes that were in front of her, she slowed yeah. it down. Like she, I don't mean she slowed down our whole tempo. I mean, she slowed down her playing because when she was like reading, she was that. going like, and she was reading all that note for note. But then when she yeah. had to think of what she was going to play, she went, bum, 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 bum. you know, she's doing stuff like that, little yeah. phrases. And I was yeah. like, man, that is just really smart playing. It was so, yeah, it fit perfectly. And it was very efficient, a, a very efficient way to do it. Where I, I went, you know, and it was like, you had to keep running. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like it, it didn't fit, you know, bit. you thought you had to keep running. And she yeah, was like, oh, exactly. no, you, can, you can stroll for a bit and then like pick up speed. But yeah, like that's great that you're, you know, learning from her. She obviously has so much more, you know, experience in this style of music. So it's like that's to it. pick up stuff like that is it's not like she taught you or anything that she noticed and you're like, OK. And I feel that way about the PW Improv Jam. I watch everybody else's and go, yeah. Oh, that was cool, and I'm going to try that. And I've really, since the beginning, we're at week 92 or something, and uh, I'm still, like, learning stuff, and that well, was one of them, is, like, don't jump right in. You know, yeah. don't just go crazy right from the start, because where are you going to go from there? Also, like, I've been starting to, and even in the, the Monday Night Jams, jam out some of the chords first, different, you know, start with that. And yeah. then kind of start solo in and go back to the chords for a second solo, you know, rather in, and you'll play them in a different way than, than the backing track plays them. But that, that's so much of the job of a, you know, lead guitarist too, is like playing rhythm, but playing maybe in a different way than other, other, you know, the rhythm player is playing it. Totally. You know, so. So I wanted to ask you, so, cause I was talking about the fact that you've done so many things like you, um, you totally redid your, your website and you've, um, you've been working on this, these other things, you know, you've got the course up and running, but now you're talking about another thing called, is it the woodshed? Am I saying the right thing? Yeah. Yeah. The woodshed. So yeah, yeah that's, um, <clears throat> it's like the other side of the coin for the pentatonics, right? So the how to solo course is like all right how do you take the pentatonic scale and like play it over changes play it in a melodic way mm -hmm. right as opposed to just like loosen out with it or whatever yeah uh, so that was that was my first thing but then the woodshed is the other side of the coin which is like playing the pentatonic scale like and it's filled with all sorts of stuff like technical sort of stuff you know so there's a lot of these there's a whole section i recorded an hour and a half of video the other day there's a ton of these permutations in there whole warm-up section and uh, you know like these sort of things where you're just playing one note per finger 
And then you'd maybe try start on the second string uh, finger. And the third finger. All the way up and down the neck, you know, backwards. And those are designed to kind of, you know, get your fingers to do what you want them to do when you want them to do it, you know, like build those pathways. And then there's a whole section on using the pentatonic scale in sequences, you know, like groups of sixes. You know, fives. You know. So you can sound like Eric Johnson or Eric Gales. Uh, groups of three. Anything I could think of, you know. Um, any sort of sequence that I use, because that's kind of how I think when I solo. So I'm, I'm thinking like, all right, what pentatonic am I using over this chord right now? And then it's like, what am I going to do with it? You know what I mean? Right. Like, you know, so am I going to just play some notes? Am I going to play like a scale sequence? And it's not like I'm thinking it. I just do this stuff so much that I hear it in my head and I'm like, oh, I want to do that thing. You know, like the the Richie Kotzen thing. That sort of super fast kind of that's groups yep. of eight that's in there you know string skipping like the new note that sort of stuff so taking those little bits and then creating licks out of them i, I like i really have don't have the memory to be like i'm gonna play this you know joe bonamassa lick from beginning to end because i think it'll fit right here or here's that that ripping lick from cliffs of dover Right. I think of like I take the ingredients of those licks, so to speak, and then I just throw them all together in the moment, mash them up, and then things come out, you know, like licks come out of it. So there's a lot of that. Then there's a whole section on hot licks where it takes some of your quintessential licks, like um, like the Chuck Berry lick. <laughs> And then it's take it takes that and it's level one and then level two might be you know kind of like a jimmy page, jimmy page. thing and then yeah. level three you're like where can i go next and you know, you know all yeah. that stuff so i try to say like take an idea like a kernel of an idea and just keep like it, you know, improving upon it or take leveling it up, so to speak. Um, so there's that whole section. There's a whole section on like three note per strings, pentatonic, taking two shapes of the pentatonic, mm -hmm. and putting those together and different like patterns you can do with that, like, uh, that sort of stuff. Yep. Yeah. Like to get past, past just going dunk, 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 like you have one yeah. shape, you know. Yeah. I just took two shapes and put them together and man, you yeah. can, you can go for miles on that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. There's so much, there's so much. Yeah. And that's the part I'm building out now, you know, like so cool. And then, so each of these videos, I put them in uh, like the software called sound slice. So you have the video over here mm. and over here you have the tab like synced up to the video. You know, and so you can take that tab and slow it down, speed it up, add a metronome click, see how it looks on the piano. You can mm. loop a section and just repeat that section and slow it down and really kind of get it, you know, yeah. like, so it's it's been a lot of work, but I feel like it's just, just awesome resource, you know, like to have at, in a companion or you know, with the other course, you know, how, what scale should I play at what time? And then how should I play it? Or as a standalone thing for someone's just getting into the pentatonics or just getting into playing leads because it's going to help you sync up your fingers. It's going to show you all the shapes of the pentatonic are in there. All the shapes like the dominant pentatonic are in there. I even did the church modes. Those are all in there. Oh, wow. Okay. So I think those are like the three main scales that, you know, you, you can get away with everything, do everything with those. So I, that's really interesting to me because I remember when we first talked and you were saying, I think I had asked if like, can anybody use this? And you said, it's really like 
the idea was like from the mid level sort of player to get to the next level, you know, but it sounds like what you're doing now, this program fills in those blanks at the beginning as well, you know? So yeah. it's not like you can already play. Now you're going to like really pump up your playing to the next level. It's like, okay, you really haven't played yet. This is where you can start. And it fills in in an interesting way up to that point. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It, it's kind of how it's designed to kind of take a player that, you know, that has played chords. They can play their, their open chords. Yep. They can play some bar chords. Cool. And they're like, I want to get into soloing and kind of yeah. get them started on the right path you know like yeah with these exercises you know they're going across it. just get their <laughs> fingers dexterity moving you know that sort of spider thing yeah well i remember doing that very like that makes me laugh because i remember doing that very thing <laughs> and i remember it started with um the bass line from hey joe you know the den oh yeah yeah dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it started with that because, like, I'm talking like grade seven or something, maybe grade, I don't yeah. know. I was a kid and I heard that and I was like, oh, I have to learn how to play that. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then a couple of years later, probably like grade 10 or something like that, I started playing with a guy who was playing bass and his teacher said, just play that all the way up the neck. So you go, dun, 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 up and then back down like the song actually does just keep going so you yeah so we got to the point where we would just go you know like yeah just up the frets and it's that's sort of where i started thinking that way like huh i wonder what else i can do like the kind of thing you were like anything you could think of yeah something to just throw your mind into like it was also to an extent it was the time like a lot of judas priest stuff you know, if you think yeah. about um, the uh, the Ripper, and then they just keep on going yeah. up. <laughs> it's yeah, like... yeah. So many riffs are just exercises that turn into riffs. Exactly. stuff like that but then also there was Ingrid Malmsteen had just come out right so Rising yeah. Force it wasn't like I could go down down dun, 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 I could play what he played so I used to have the cassette player because I didn't have the pentatonic way or woodshed I didn't <laughs> right <laughs> I'd play the cassette and go super fast I think this is what he played but we have no no way of actually slowing it down like even if you had right. the VHS of his lessons yeah you couldn't slow it down you know so, so if he so didn't fast. <laughs> it was it <laughs> so we'd go through the same lick that one like let's say three seconds of of actual music and the only yeah. way we could practice with it was to do that same thing on different frets yeah yeah and try to find it somewhere <laughs> yeah like, i think he went from the 12 to the 13 and then the 15 and yeah that sounds that sounds pretty momsteen ish i'll just try to build up yeah. and do that as fast as i can you know <laughs> it. you know the harmonic minor scale be like oh this sound that sounds like you know Malmsteen. yeah that, oh, that's that it cool you know like, your mom's momsteen, there you know yeah <laughs> That's when you do need that one scale, though. You got to collect his his scale, the Malmsteen scale, like the harmonic yeah. <laughs> mind to be able to shred that out. So, is the Woodshed your affiliate program? Because you had mentioned an affiliate program. Is that what you're referring to? Was that? Oh yeah. So I'm thinking for this next launch or some of these new launch, um, start reaching out to affiliates like yourself, you know, okay. and um, uh, offering actually mainly for the how to solo over course but you know i might bundle it with the woodshed at the same time oh, actually okay. so the, that does come with the woodshed it always has i had a a, a 
like a prototype version and people loved it like that were in there and they'd go oh i was checking out that lick and i was learning that and then like i'd see him in their jam i'd be like oh that's that you know richie Cotson lick or the teeter totter lick i see it yeah you know um so what i did though is i had a lot of like different videos i've done over the years in there so i went back and i'm like i upgraded them all and i'm syncing them up with that that like software and stuff so really updating it but for the affiliate thing i'm thinking reach out to people like you and uh like andy over in scotland like like you know people that are out there trying to like spread the word of guitar and 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 you know help people yeah. and offer them possibly the free you know come check out the course you know oh, and I see. become okay. an affiliate if you want like if you believe in it and you want to tell people about it and then yeah you would be affiliate you would get a you know a portion of whoever signed up through your link as affiliates oh, do okay. you know so that's the idea like try oh. to get some people and just get honest reviews and if they like it spread the word and and stuff like that so mm -hmm. if that yeah. sounds interesting to you i i mean absolutely because i mean ever since i heard about this i've been spreading the word <laughs> i mean well, i know I aside from the that. fact that you and i are th are chatting for the third time like how many times has this come up because i'd be talking to somebody I, typically i'd be talking with a guitarist and we'd talk about oh yeah there's this thing called the pentatonic way and they do this thing and you know like because and it's yeah, it's yeah. one of the things too that i, I love like with with all this stuff, whether it's the pentatonic way that I'm mentioning, or the stage dive streaming platform, or just somebody playing their songs, you know, um, I do it because of what you just said. Like I I believe in it, and I think this is good stuff for people to know. You know, I, yeah. I remember I was interviewing um, a songwriter once. Um, I just last week I interviewed him for for the third time as well. Gary Darnell Wortham is his name. Okay, cool. Um, I'll check. He, yeah, I mean, he's he's always just fun to talk with because we do what you and I have been doing on this chat, just kind of like all over the place. <laughs> you know? But Gary, he was talking about this thing that he uses. I don't remember the name of it, honestly, but it was like some sort of sort of elastic bands that you put on your fingers when you're practicing to make them stronger. Wow. Cool. I'm not describing it well, but it was this product. And he's like, but I won't say the name because, you know, that... It's going to come across like an advertisement. And I said, no, like, if this is something you, you think helps you, it, it feels like it would be un, it would be selfish to not tell people, other people, because I'm not saying go buy this thing. I'm not putting the link in here to to sell it. You know, like, that's not the thing. And I'm, I'm not getting anything from from those guys, you know. Right, right. What I mean is I, I just think that this is something useful. So that's what I've been doing with with you and i think oh, i appreciate that yeah if i could drive more people towards it I, absolutely why wouldn't i you know yeah that's the thing um so i remember when i got a berkeley like they had music business courses but not really i mean at that point napster just came out music business revenue just went pfft, down this is before ipods and streaming and any of this so right you get out of school and i had to start thinking businessy you know like and i felt like selling stuff you feel creepy you're like oh you know at first you're like i don't want to you know come off like that but then i read somewhere exactly what you said it's like you're not like selling stuff you're like trying to help you're like saying i especially if you believe in the product you're like yeah this this works this helps me it might help you i just want to put it in front of you so you don't miss the opportunity you don't have to take it or whatever. I'm just saying. Yeah. This this might help. Uh, and if if I don't tell you, you might never get the help you need. So, it, exactly. and, and looking at it, framing it that way, definitely helped. I'm not like trying to, like shuck, shuck and jive and be like, hey, why don't you buy my thing? It's like, <laughs> it's like here, man. I have this could help. Like if if someone was spilled something and you're holding a towel in your hand, are you gonna be like, oh, should I give him this towel? Like. You know, like, oh, here, just do this, it. Yeah. You know, this will wipe up. You know, this is what you need, I think. Yeah. I, I didn't understand, like, in your, because you had sent me a te text message mentioning affiliate program. I had no idea. I didn't understand what you meant by that, I, actually. Now it makes sense what you're saying. And it does, 
I remember when I first left Canada, the first place that I went to was Ecuador. I was there for two oh, years wow. about, I was teaching English as a second language. Um, and I remember I had this student, an adult student, and he asked if I would give him some like extra lessons, like on the weekends or something like that. Like he, we'd meet for an hour after the school let out, you know, yeah. and we had become friends. And when, um, I did the first lesson. He said, okay, I didn't even ask you how much is it? And I said, oh no, man, I couldn't, I couldn't charge you. Like you're my friend and we're just talking in English. And he goes, no, man, don't sell yourself short. Like you're providing a service that I really need and I really appreciate. And for me to do it for free, first of all, is not honest of me towards you, but also the reality is it's not sustainable because one of us will have, will end up quitting. You might have to quit because you can't afford to be here for free. And I might quit because I don't take it that seriously. I'm not paying. You know, like well, that's the thing. <clears throat> yeah. That's the thing. Like when I priced my course too, I was I had thinking that. Like you have to have some skin in the game to keep showing up. Yeah. It's gotta hurt a little bit not to not to Just do, go, you know, do it. Whatever. Use the thing you have. Yeah. And so yeah. far it's worked. <laughs> Yeah, which is great. And I, I I mean, that's part of what I love as well is that like from the first time I, I first saw your stuff and then I see more and more people getting it, understanding it, trying out and going, that's awesome. Like, and then like I've been doing, tell other people, you know, like, you know, I, I just love seeing how it's it's growing it's and, and it's evolving because you keep on doing more based on the feedback that you get. So it's like that you're constantly tweaking and changing redoing videos you know like when you updated the website it was like a completely different feel going to the website and all the animations and stuff like that you know that kind of stuff yeah. like oh, thank you yeah really like i don't know i mean part of it is that i i think you're really skilled at it because i think you have that like you said the visual brain as well you know right which, yeah I think I'm, I'm I'm missing that with our mind on music because I hear it and I'm getting better at doing the edits and all those kinds of things. But like in terms of the look of it, it's still sort of very static, my logo work and those things. Whereas with yours, it's really come alive, which is really wow, cool. And for that. me, that's like, all right, I need to up my game, dude. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I Thank you. I appreciate the, that uh, feedback and compliments, man. Um, I, back in the day, I was always a visual artist as well as a, a musician and actually dropped out of art school. I went to art school first after uh, high school and dropped yeah. out because I was like, oh, I think I can teach myself this, like, but I can't teach myself music. So I went that way right. after a big break and paying off student loans and working third shift at a gas station. I was like, I got to go back to school. So I went to Berkeley and, and that yeah. was cool. So I've For always had story. that visual sort of like drive or understanding of the world and got into like computers and stuff um, because I thought it was cool, you know, and, and then luckily I have had jobs doing multimedia for big corporations and they gave me all the cool software to play around with, you know, <laughs> so I was like, oh, cool toys. And uh, I love that stuff. So um, I appreciate that. And, and I'm always trying to refine it. I mean, I came up with this method of soloing back when my son, my first son was born. He's 13 now. So I've been, I've been trying, like, refining it and refining the system and, and how to teach it and teaching people and, and learning how to teach it better. But selling it's been hard, like trying to, like, you know, not sell it, but get in front of people that it could help. And I've, I've wanted to give up many times, you Ooh. know, like my life would be so much easier if I just played music and just used this method myself. But I really think it's so helpful that I just can't, I keep coming back. I'm like, no, I really believe like this could really change a lot of people's, you know, change their lives as yes. much as like being able to play better does change someone's life. It's not like changing the world or anything, but improve their experience with the guitar and, and help them express themselves. You know, I've always been much like yourself, any teacher, I feel like they have a drive and they get joy out of other people succeeding. And like, you see them 
improve and, and blossom or whatever, if not to get too hippy dippy on <laughs> or anything, but like <laughs> you see him like, you know, get it. They get these aha moments and you're like, ah, yeah, you get it now. And then, and then their life is different after that or whatever. That's it. And, and you know, okay. So from a teacher perspective, because what you just said is actually, it totally makes sense to me. Like I, I could probably like very few of my students over the last 26 years that I've been teaching in international schools. Yes, I'm wow. old. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. But, I'm right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, in those years, like very few, one or two have gone into something music related in their work. And you know what I mean? Like they didn't go into music, but a lot of those kids over the years, at one point or another, they see me on Facebook or or like actually not that long ago, I was on LinkedIn and this uh, this girl lady, I mean, she's in her 30s. It's not like she's a kid, you know, um, yeah. she wrote to me and she said, Mr. Van, you might not remember me. My name is and she told me her name and she said, like, I do this now. She's in advertising. And she yeah. said, but I remember when you taught me how to play the piano back in Venezuela in the 1990s, you know? Yeah. And it was a life changer for me because I really built up confidence that I could learn things that I thought were impossible. You know? That's awesome. Yeah, it, it really does. And you, you see all the studies, you know, every once in a while it's a magazine article or something about how learning music just changes the brain in certain oh. ways. And I'm sure like, it had residual effects and, and allowed them to succeed in those different, you know, areas. Yeah. Well, I'm loving right now. I'm kind of obsessing slightly with this group called bigger, better brains, BBB. Oh yeah. And it's all about that. It's like they, they do all these incredible studies, twin studies and all this kind of stuff where like they, yeah. they take two twins and they teach one how to play the piano and they don't teach the other one. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and then, then they oh, wait no. 20 years and see what happens, you know? Like they've been doing these kind of, they, I don't think they themselves do the studies. They report on the studies, you know? Okay. Um, and that's it's not all that study. kind of stuff. Like some of it is just, they're just telling us about brain research that's been done, but all the kinds of things like the synapses that are, that are built. And actually I was just talking about Gary Darnell Wortham in last Saturday's episode. Um, yeah. We were talking about that because he's a left-handed, he's left-handed, but he plays right-handed guitar. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because when his parents bought him a guitar, like the Jimi Hendrix story, kind of, you know, they yeah. didn't know that. They were just like, this is how everybody plays. So this is how you play. And he's so, like, yeah. I feel like I should be doing this way. <laughs> no, no, wrong. But he said <laughs> that the moment he started to learn the guitar, he felt like he got smarter. He just felt like he got he got it. Like yeah. school became easier and he felt like it happened really fast and it was actually noticeably different to him. Yeah. You know? That's fantastic. I, 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 I really believe in that stuff. And so we were talking about bigger, better brains at the time, because you know, some of their reports, it's just like, it makes sense, but it's so cool to see it in a scientific study that was done with, you know, thousands and thousands or whatever of people. Right. And it just confirms what we thought, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. I'm does. To check it out yeah it's it's fantastic yeah and actually if you watched last week's episode it's uh it's we do talk about it in there as well and the, the link is in the description and all that oh, i love that i love it's that. Incredible. i love when they you know they they deliver it in a way or anybody delivers information in a way that's like easy intuitive to kind of interpret right like back yeah. when i started that book Twitter had just came out, you know, so it was 140 characters. Everybody's talking, oh, you only have 140 characters to like say what you need to say. Can you do it or whatever? Yeah. And I was like, that's interesting. People are like, you know, they're trying to distill their message into like small things because, you know, that's all you had. ADHD for the most part, <laughs> you know, like where it's like you only have the, that much time to like you have their in, you know, attention, then they're off. And at the same time, infographics that was like the big thing these things were coming out <clears throat> and not being visual i was like obsessed with them I'd, I'd look at every infographic i could find on the web and just it didn't even matter what it was about 
I would just look at him and be like, oh, yeah, cool. That's a good way to represent that. And, you know, so then I took them both and put them together in that book. Like, like let's take this concept because all the books I've read up to then were just like you're saying, just text. Yep. You know, it's just all this text. And, like, they talk about 16th notes and modes and, you know, all this key change. And I'm like, this makes no sense. You know, so I made these graphics. I made little blurbs, just distilled it down to easily. Every word was, I considered like a million times. I kept reading through and trying to refine it. And so then the forward of the book is this quote uh, attributed to Martin Mull, where it's like, talking about music is like dancing. Dancing to architecture. architecture. You know, like, it made so much sense. I'm like, that's true. Like, like you can't just read about music. You have to see it and, and experience it and try it and play it. So, yeah. Yeah. Dr. Seuss's friend said, "Try, I, I challenge you to write a, a kid's book with 25 words, no more. No. And I think he came up with, you know, Green Eggs and Ham or something or Cat in the Hat. And it was just like a classic, classic, you know, yeah. like sometimes it just challenges you so much. And because if you have everything at your disposal, you go everywhere and you have all these options, you get overwhelmed or it's not as focused as it, yeah. as it could I mean- be. Today, actually, I was showing kids um, the challenge for this week for my students uh, is uh, we wrote a really simple melody together, and then we decided what chord voicings would go with that melody, okay? It's like eight bars, really short. Yeah. And they have to choose jazz, classical, or rock. They have to play all of them, the whole class in small groups has to play that same melody and those same chords, but they have to represent it as a subgenre of Jazz, classical, or rock. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so today I had these <laughs> ninth graders that were, it was super cool. So these kids were playing it and I've got a, a kid on the flute and a kid on the violin, one on the piano and one on the on the drums. And they're trying to do a, uh, I think it was a cool jazz is what they were trying to do, right? So yeah. the drummer sits down and goes, and I was like, whoa, dude. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no like this this the, the snare is like this the rest of the drum mostly your ride cymbal is like the meal and the snare is like a little bit of pepper you're gonna put on you know <laughs> that's a good way to look at it yeah you know the, the kick might be like salt so, you know you put a little you put a little right. pepper that you know but ta, 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 that's the meal <laughs> and then you go that's the salt yeah yeah yep <laughs> and the kid just did that like just went from playing total rock four on the floor banging just yeah. played a, a jazz beat and i was like okay you guys saw that right that was awesome <laughs> that was that's awesome yeah and that's what I mean, like distilling it down to like just a few sentences a little bit of code that yep. that helps them output yeah and she got it like boom just right away just she changed how she played them. and it sounds exactly like it's supposed to and you can just see them like light up you know That's so awesome yeah it's it's a great feeling and i think uh what you're talking about is the same sort of thing because I, I really like that you touched on how awkward it is to to move from that point where you're actually charging someone to do that you know right yeah you know actually i was talking with some students the other day about that they were like they were like you know teachers don't really care about the money. And I was like, ah, you know, I do have to rent to pay. You know, I need to feed myself and my family. Yeah, like, this is my job, you know? So I wouldn't keep coming in if the school stopped paying me. And then right. it feels yeah. like, oh, so like, you only care about the money. And it's like, no, if I only cared about the money, I'd be in a different job because be bankers make a lot more than I do. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> Not that we, you know, you don't care about the money, but you, you will take a pay cut in order to do what you, what you're passionate about. Right? Yeah. I'm looking at time here and I'm thinking, uh, we didn't talk about your music. Random Song Generator was 2008. Found Art uh, was, when did you do that? 2021? That was during the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Right in the middle there. Yeah. Yeah. Like
One of the questions I wanted to ask you. Yeah. As a, like when you do those those recordings, do you consider yourself a songwriter there, or are you an improviser, or what? It, how do you think of that? So for random song generator, that was that was me learning how to record on the computer. But I wrote all that stuff. You know what I mean? So that was more like writing and getting into lyrics. The challenge, like like talking about limitations, the limitations on found art was like, I want to see if I can find these, you know, royalty free backing tracks online and then take them and try not to cut them up or anything. And then just add one guitar part and then make them into a completely different song, you know, with, with actual composition, with solo sections, you know, like, so that was the challenge there. And I had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, my computer was a little weird there. So oh. I feel like all of the phrasing there, all my playing is like milliseconds like off. So I'm a little, in that way, I'm like super critical and I'm like, oh man, it could have been, it's not really representing what I wanted to do. But, you know, so in that case, that was kind of like a songwriter. I was writing my part to okay. make it something more than what it, the two parts added up to. And then now I'm in, while my guitar gently weeps, which is a, a Beatles instrumental trio, which is more like Hendrix meets the Beatles. It's all instrumental and that I'm just doing um, arrangements of their tunes, you know, like trying to take everything but the bass and the drums and put it on the guitar, like distill it down to just a few like core things and get the song across. So I'm having so much fun with that. It's awesome. I've heard a lot of it. I just posted your name, that tune you did like that. You played oh, one yeah. of the one of the songs you said, let's do a name that tune. And I just posted it on my Facebook group because I do a weekly name that tune. Uh, oh, cool. <laughs> so I posted that as my name that tune. <laughs> oh. <laughs> About 200 people will be trying to figure out what song that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I will mention too, you are doing a, you're like an actual book signing you're doing from November 29th to December 7th. At yeah, the, yeah, at a local library here, the Festival of Trees. I did it last year and I'll do it again and I'm going to do a little performance there. So yeah, yeah, that was very cool, man. And, and people come in and actually, oh, my, my husband plays guitar. Or this person plays guitar and I signed the book for them and. And uh, yeah, it's it's very cool just to meet people like that and get out. Yeah, there. that's cool. I, I I love that you support libraries as well. So that's cool. Neil, All thank right. you so much for chatting with me for a third time. And I hope very soon there's a fourth time. Oh, I hope so. Too. Thank you so much, man. Have a great one. Good luck thank on you. your school hunt. We'll talk again soon. All right. Yeah. All right. See ya. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Good night.